I had no clue until the ending. What, what I just, no. No clue. I was, yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Catherine and I'm here today with a book review. So this review is for 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstad. This was originally written in Dutch, I believe, or Norwegian, um, and it was translated by Tara F. Chase. Yeah, it was first printed in Norwegian. Pretty cool. You know, the weirdest thing, I could have sworn I had a copy of this in hardcover because the hardcover copy, the, the cover for it is crazy awesome scary. Um, but apparently, no, I just, I have the international UK, um, paperback. So, yeah, strange, very strange. So the main premise of this book is that NASA wants to get back to the moon where they actually have this secret space station called DARLA 2, and they need a reason to kind of do it. So they hold this worldwide lottery for kids ages like 14 or 15 to 18, and three winners are picked and they are actually going to go to the moon and be the first teenagers on the moon. So it was like a pretty big deal. Our main characters who were picked are Mia and Midori and Antoine. Mia is really like the main focus. She's our main protagonist and we really follow her through this entire journey. You see at the beginning of the book there are separate perspectives from when they decide to enter or when they have been entered for them um, and then like their process and exactly what goes on up until the point where they finally do come together at Kennedy Space Station for their training and then eventually they're up in the moon and that's when shit starts to get crazy. I was slightly terrified while reading like the last 25% of this book. Not gonna lie, I turned on every light when I had to um, not be where I was. Like if I had to walk downstairs, all the lights went on. I was a little jumpy while I was reading this. I also did this book on audiobook, so that adds this whole other line of dimension to it. So hearing it told to you just like builds up this horrible sense of anxiety and fear and just holy shitness that accumulates at the end of the book. And then you're like, oh, what just happened? So the way that this book is set up is actually really interesting. So I did finish reading it with the actual book and I kind of read a little bit in between. So I was able to get the full effects of both the like intense chills that the audiobook really does and then the like coolness of the graphics of the actual book. So the book has these really awesome photos that go along with whatever part of the story is happening. It, it adds extra to the story, which I really enjoyed. I felt as though you definitely did not get that extraness with the audiobook, but you got more creep factor with the audiobook. So win win on both. I really, really enjoyed this book. And I definitely need to get it in the hardback, which I could have sworn I actually had. Like, it's driving me crazy because... I'm positive I bought it. I found that this book had a really slow build up to the the part where stuff actually starts to like happen and get really creepy and and you're just left like needing to know what happens next but want, not wanting to read on because you're kind of scared a little. I did find that at times before they were actually on the moon it could lag a little. It took me a while to actually get into the book mostly because you were continually switching character perspectives between Mia and Midori and Antoine and the older gentleman who used to work for NASA in the um, sanitation and like other NASA employees so it was just like it was constantly back and forth and back and forth. So when it finally switched to just primarily being Mia, I really started to get into it more. And then when then they were on the moon, like I just, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop to the tune of needing to finish reading it at four in the morning last, well, this morning, I guess, from what I'm filming. And um, 
having an hour left on my audiobook and being like, no. Like, I need to turn on all the lights, go downstairs and get my copy of the book, and then bring it back up to bed and finish reading, and then try and sleep after. Not the best idea. As slow as I did find the uptake to be with this book, I really did like the way that it was paced. I don't think you could have done it any faster because things had to be told to you to build upon later in the book, and an information dump just would not have done for this book at all. So it does take almost halfway through the book before our characters are actually on the moon. So halfway through the book before start, stuff starts to really speed up and then you're really thrust into the whole conspiracy and what's going on and is someone sabotaging this and how is this possible? You know, is it aliens? Is it someone on board? Like what is happening? And that's when I just like, I like I said, I could not put it down. I just had to finish it. Like I was steamrolling through this audiobook all evening. And then the ending happens. So you find out what's going on. You find out what the conspiracy is. You find out what they were covering up. And shit starts to get crazy. And then you hit like the beginning of the third part. And you're just like, whoa. And then there are the last, like, two chapters of the book. And I'm sitting there reading this being like, what the fuck? I feel as though someone almost has to explain this ending to me. Like, I don't know when things happened to make it the ending happen the way that it did. Because, like, I just, how? How? The ending came so completely out of left field for me that I was like, I felt like I was smacked. And I was like, what? What? Did, did that just, did that happen? It, it, it did. Uh, however, as much as I don't understand the ending, I like the ending. So there's that. There's also like, an epilogue kind of where it's official NASA documentation and you find out a little bit about what happened at the ending but you got to piece it together yourself and a lot of things are left unsaid and yeah like this is a book where I don't I don't know what I want but I want something else after it to explain just just explain explain it to me all in all, this was an amazing, amazing read for me. I definitely gave it four to five stars on Goodreads. And it's a different type of like science fiction from what I would normally read. So it was really interesting in that way. There were times when I got a little like meh with the characters. Antoine especially, I was just like, boy, get over yourself. But like what that halfway mark, that halfway mark in the book, I just, I really started liking the characters more. I started liking the flow of the story more. It started to pick up more. So if you have started reading this, you need to get to like, I think on Goodreads, cause I was like tracking it, it's about 45%. That's, that's where I marked it. That I was like, yes, they're finally on the moon. Shit is starting to happen. If you want a book that can be classified as scare your pants off, this might be the book for you. It is definitely what, on the scare factor, I was hoping that last R.L. Stein book that I read was going to be. I didn't want to leave my room. I was constantly checking over my shoulder in the dark hallways because, like I said, it was like early, early morning when I finished reading this. Like, I was jumping at any little noise while reading it. I can definitely find this type of story, and this story in particular even, Invading my nightmares down the road, and then I'll be like, damn you book. And that is it for me. This review is already way too long. So, yes. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy reading.